Am I being a hypocrite over the first home buyer grant? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your hashtag not sponsored cheap coffee and let's talk about a video I put up yesterday and a comment left by one viewer that I thought it would be valuable discussing. Now this was a video, there we go, uh, in which I was critical of the impact that the increase to the first home buyer's grant here in Queensland has had. In November, they doubled the grant from fifteen dollars to $30,000, and they proudly said it was higher than every other state in the world. Now, my argument is that unless you increase supply, everyone, and I think, did I do a nice little dodgy diagram? I did, yes. If you increase demand, but without increasing supply, the cost goes up. You can see my beautifully sketched with a mouse uh, supply and demand diagram. That's a simplification of it, but essentially this is what's happening because we've got so many well, issues with meeting supply of our housing. You've got an overheated market. I've got another builder that's just gone bust here in Queensland. It, it's a daily occurrence. Now, the comment that this viewer left is in regards to previous statements I've made over allowing individuals to access their superannuation in order to buy a house. Now, I found it quite frustrating struggling to get into the housing market when you've got all this super money sitting there. And I understand the point of super. It's so uh, boomers can get old and retire with a big chunk of money and they don't dare spend it because they don't know how. You'll you, you have people who've got hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in super, and they, they won't. They probably can't. They physically can't spend it because they've lived their whole life saving it and, and, and stashing away and being cheap and being frugal. This is why I'm afraid there'll be a de death tax coming in because all the hard work that they've done is going to be stolen by the state. But anyway, anyway, that I'm being a bit facetious here, but that does happen. My point is that I'd encourage people to have access to using their super to buy a house because you want... Well, two things. For a prosperous society, a stable society, you want home ownership. You want private home ownership. You don't want dependence on the state. We want more conservative-leaning people that have a stake in this nation. And the only way to get it is if you own even a part of it, a little part of it. And sadly, that's disappearing. And we're seeing, we're seeing that in the frustrations of the youth. Now... It's also going to lead to a much more comfortable retirement. Rather than getting your little stipend out of your super fund and then renting, if you own your own house, you've got stability, you've got certainty there. That's, that's, that's why you get all these oldies not wanting to move. You know, they're in a house that's much bigger than they need. They don't want to move because they want that stability and that certainty. And I can understand that. I'm getting, getting old and grumpy myself. Now, the comments this viewer made, let's, let's have a look here because... Here we go. So, Heiser, isn't it contradictory for you to be against the first homeowner's grant and also for people to be able to access their super to buy a home or housing? Both just end up boosting house prices, but buyers armed with the extra war chest piss it away against the wall in a handful of bid against each other. Super should be left alone to grow and compound to future people's retirement period. Now, hang on, I'll make sure you can see that entire comment. There we go. Now, there's one fundamental difference here between allowing people to access their super and the government handing out grants. If people access their super, that's their money. That's part of your compensation. That's your package. Previous generations that got into the housing market much younger weren't burdened with being forced to save by the nanny state like this. They could deploy their resources however they want. If they wanted to go just gun ho housing, go, 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 get that debt gone, stress-free, then invest, they could. They weren't forced to put money aside. I'm not against super, but my argument is that it should be the individual's right to use this money how they want. And I know everyone's going to go, oh, but the average is so stupid, they're going to piss it away. They're going to piss it away anyway. And they're probably not even, you know, the stupid ones, the real lazy drongos that... that uh, that I've encountered on Twitter that pissed me off so much. The algorithm knows who to send you. That, you know, a, a whinging that the doll isn't enough and then begging for money to pay for the, the bloody car rego rather than, you know, making money. 
finding a way to get ahead. They're going to do it anyway. We're always going to have a certain percentage of our population that will be at that level. That's, that's part of human nature. That's not going to change. But should we punish everyone else for that? that that's the Australian way, isn't it? You know, the, the, what is it? the smallest amount of harm, so we're all restricted from having access to this money and use it as freely as we want to, in the hopes that the mid, largest majority will have this nest egg for them later in the future. But the pro- problem is here, you're getting a whole generation that are struggling to get into housing. And part of that, I would argue, is because their money is being locked away, it's put in the market. So what they're doing is the government, to address this and to win votes, is handing out money. But where's that money coming from? From debt? From future generations of taxpayers? That's where it's coming from. We're not paying for it now. The Queensland government is borrowing money to pay for wages and services, not for infrastructure, not for capex, to pay for fleeting costs. That shouldn't be what happens. So with these grants, you've got the impact on future generations, burden with a, a tax burden and a debt, whereas if superannuation, you'll feel the sting. Sure, housing's going to go up no matter what. Okay, let, let's... The argument that housing is going to be more affordable by it's going down in price, let's just put that aside. That's never going to happen. Okay, oh, you know, well, the media will go up up in bloody blazes over a 10% or 5% fall. That's bullshit. It, it's not going to make any difference over long term. I, I'm firmly in the camp now that there's so many things propping up this housing sector, so much government intervention that it ain't going to come, come crumbling down. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I, I, I just... I've seen t- too much, uh, too much intervention. I've looked at, at, all, at how the media will bullshit on these negative news articles just for uh, the clicks when it's got no basis in reality. Yeah, no, I, I don't even consider that. Okay, housing's going to go up one way or another. So let's put that aside. Now, do you want what is fueling the housing going up going to be debt for future generations or the stock market taking a hit? So if people suddenly started taking out money to invest in housing, well, then shares will go down. So then if they choose to invest in the market, it'll be more affordable. So they get a house, and then they get a slightly more affordable, won't be much, slightly more affordable stock market. What's better? Home ownership, cheaper access to investments, and more freedom. That's why it's not contradictory. They're two different things. This one here, mate, I, I don't even know what, what the hell your name is. You've got a Pokemon with a gun. Are you a Pal, Pal World player? I haven't played that. My sister in law has booted it up. It's, it sounds crazy. Anyway, this one here, government debt. This one here, the super funds, lobby groups, banks, and unions will be shitty because they, individuals dare to have control of their money. So that's my argument. That's why I'd argue for super as opposed to government grants. What do you reckon? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hang on, let me do a... We'll do a cube zoom here. Sure, look at that. Look at that special effect. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And let me know your take on this one in the comments below. It's never going to be an easy solution. Do you think housing is going to get cheaper? Or if you join the cynical old bastard group that I'm in now that doesn't think it's going to go down? As always, take care. See you next time. Bye for now.